you want to get a good job and then you're going to work your way up. You're going to go from associate analyst to VP to director and maybe even get to one of those executive roles. Maybe you can become a CEO one day. But this is not what wealthy people are working for. Wealthy people are not working to climb the corporate ladder. Wealthy people are working to own the corporate ladder. Now, the interesting thing about this was growing up, I was never told or knew that you could even do that. I would never knew that you could own the corporate ladder, but this is what wealthy people are working for. Because when you're working to climb the corporate ladder, the one thing that you're working for is a salary. You're working for a payment for your labor. But that's not what wealthy people do. Wealthy people are looking for equity. They're working for the profits. So when you work for a company, you work eight hours and then you get paid for eight hours. When you own the company, now you don't have to actually work in the company. You might, depending on what your position is, but you don't necessarily have to as the owner of a company. When you own the company, now what you're working for is at the end of the year, how much cash is left over in the bank account. Here's the thing, if you just follow the traditional system where you go to school and you get a job and that's how you make money, well, then you're just one step away from being broke because you're relying on your salary and your salary only. What happens if you get sick and you can't go to work? What happens if your company is run into the ground by the executives? What happens if you lose your job, you get laid off, you get fired, then what? Well, now you lose your income and now you have to scramble. If you don't have any savings, you're gonna have to go into debt to continue funding your lifestyle until you can go out and find another salary. This is why you wanna think a little bit bigger. What wealthy people are working for is they're working to own the corporate ladder, not just working to climb the corporate ladder. Now you might be hearing this thinking, well, just put it, I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't want to build a business and I don't have millions of dollars to just go out and buy a company. Fine. That's how the majority of people are. But what you can do is you can work to climb the corporate ladder and own the corporate ladder at the exact same time. This is what you want to be working to do. And this is where the real wealth is built in our system. This is one of the things that I wish every school taught in high school, middle school, and even elementary school that we understood how the system works because this was something that I had to learn through a very painful, a very emotional process because it's just crazy that we're never told this type of stuff. We live in a capitalist society. And the way that you build real wealth in a capitalist society is through your capital. Remember, here, the way that you're making money is through your labor. But the way you make money here through your capital is by owning the company. Your capital is your money. So if you can take your capital, your money, and you can use your money to get equity or ownership in a company, now you're doing what wealthy people do. Wealthy people use their money to buy up equity, whether it be in companies or real estate or whatever asset you wanna talk about. They use their money to buy these assets that way they can get a piece of this, the profits. There's a few different ways that you can do this. If you're working for any sort of public company, then maybe you can get equity as a form of compensation where you're getting some stock in the company. Or if it's a publicly traded company, you can take some of the income that you're getting from the company and if you believe in the company, you can use it to buy shares in the company itself, assuming you're not breaking any laws. You wanna to talk to the HR team at your company to make sure that there's nothing illegal with what you're doing there, but you can use your money to buy shares in the company that gives you ownership in the company that you're working to build. Or if you don't have the ability to do that, then you can take some of the income that you're making from your company and use it to buy shares of other companies on the stock market because as you're doing that, well now you're building up shares of equity in these companies. The reason why this point is so important to understand because it will help you understand the dynamics of companies across the country. Because in this system, the way it works is the executives, the people at the top of the food chain, or at least the people that most people assume are at the top of the food chain, the CEO, the other executives, they do have a boss. Their boss are the shareholders, the people who own the company. And they have a fiduciary duty, meaning they have a loyalty to increase the value of the share price, the equity. So the CEO's job and the executive's job is to do one thing. It's not to make the customers happy. It's not to make their employees happy. It's to make the shareholders richer. That's the name of the game. This is the legal fiduciary duty that the executives have. Now, the way that you do that is by creating a good product for your customers and making sure that your employees are happy and wanna to come to work every single day, but some executives are gonna care less about these people and their customers than they are about these people. So what you wanna do is understand the game and own some of this 
right? Because in this situation, a lot of people get angry. They get upset because they hate how the system works. What I'm saying is learn the rules to the system. That way you can use the system to your advantage. And what wealthy people are doing is instead of just trying to climb the corporate ladder, they're also working to own the corporate ladder. The second point that I want to talk about has to do with our money, or at least what we consider money, because most of us would consider our paper dollars, our cash, money. I grew up in a traditional Indian house. My parents are immigrants from a state in India called Punjab, and the traditional Indian culture is a save healthy culture. So growing up, I was always taught about the importance of saving money, and if I wanted to become wealthy, the way that I do that is by one, getting a good paying a job, like by becoming a doctor, and then I save the majority of my money. But the interesting thing about that is if I took $10,000 30 years ago and I buried this into the backyard and I just let it sit there, well, 30 years ago, this $10,000 would have been able to buy twice as much as what this $10,000 could today. This $10,000 lost half, 50% of its buying power over the last 30 years. Our cash, our dollars, are a liability for us to hold on to. This is where things get very interesting because we're always taught about the importance of saving money. The banks always say, save your money. It's good to save your money in the bank. But the interesting thing is if banks follow their own advice for saving money, then the banks would be broke. See, as soon as you deposit your cash in the bank, you think it's an asset. But for the banks, your deposits are a liability because the cash that you're keeping in the bank needs to be spent. The banks need to invest this money as fast as possible because they don't want to keep this cash on their balance sheet. It's a liability for them. A liability is something that takes money away from your pocket. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. So what does the bank do? Well, as soon as you deposit your cash into the bank, which you think is an asset, the bank turns around, takes this liability for them, and then they're going to lend it out. As soon as the bank lends out this cash, it becomes an asset for them. So they take your cash that they tell you to save in the bank, and then they say that this liability is in the liability column, and then they move it to the asset column and lend it out immediately. Now what do they do? Well, they lend it out in the form of mortgages, credit card debt, and all these other things. They're getting paid four, five, six, maybe 20% interest on this cash, and then they turn around and pay you next to nothing. And then on top of that, you have to fight inflation. The value of your dollars, what we call money, is dropping while the price of everything else keeps going up. So your cash is losing buying power while the bank keeps making money off of your cash. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide that goes over what passive income is, how to start generating passive income, and different passive income strategies. These are things that you can start doing even if you don't have a lot of money. So if you want to read this free guide on how to start generating passive income for free, all you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.